Hello and welcome to another episode of The Gaming Impact, a channel dedicated to classic and some of the most influential titles in gaming history. On today's episode, I'll be reviewing Tiny Toon Adventures Buster's Hidden Treasure for the Sega Genesis. It goes without saying that this is an underrated title and doesn't get as much recognition as I feel it should. Tiny Toon Adventures is a platform game developed and released by Konami in 1993. This is when I would consider Konami were at their peak in video game development, with amazing titles such as Contra, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Castlevania, Sunset Riders, and The Simpsons Arcade all recently released during this time. Tiny Toons is no exception to the quality that Konami were putting out. The story follows Buster Bunny as he finds a treasure map while cleaning out Acme University. Montana Max steals the map and decides to go and find the treasure for himself. Buster then teams up with a few of his friends in order to find the treasure before Montana Max does, as well as try to rescue some of them who show up during the game as boss levels under mind control by Dr. Gene Splicer. The gameplay is simple enough, run and jump your way through different platforms to get to the end of each level, but it differs in a way that the end of the level does not necessarily mean the edge of the map, like most platform games released at the time. In order to complete a level, you have to find Go Go Dodo. This little guy could be on some obscure areas at times, but you can find him on many places on each level, which then results in different follow-up levels being played. A nice touch for replaying the game. You might find him on top of a cliff, and you'll start the next level above ground. Or you might find him in a cave, then you'll start the next level in a cave. This is something that I really enjoy about this game. The levels flow into each other. The enemies are well designed, and it feels really satisfying when bouncing on their heads. This game starts out quite easy in fact, almost deceptively so. You play the first few levels thinking this is a children's game and all of a sudden you're going up against demons and ghosts. But that also means that there is a massive difficulty spike when you reach the fire cave level. This game gets brutal. And there are certain points that you will die because spikes might appear out of nowhere in the ground. Maybe you jumped on the spring and there are spikes in the ceiling. But at the tail end of the game, beating a level comes down to memory knowing where each enemy or danger might come from, and timing your jumps perfectly. Luckily, the game can be a little forgiving by giving you unlimited continues, three hearts at the very least on each life, and a password system that allows you to skip straight to the level you left off. Considering that the Genesis never had any save system, this was a good alternative. On the flip side to this though, there were no checkpoints in the level, so if you die, the game drags your ass back to the start of the level again. The sound design is one of my favorite aspects of this game. It works even better with that signature Sega Genesis sound chip. The music is very catchy on every level, and really captures that wacky theme that this game goes for. Sounds like jumping on a spring, running into a random pitchfork on the ground, or even just dashing into a wall with excellent animations to go with it. It captures this era of gaming really well. This is without a doubt one of my favorite platform games, and I still play it quite frequently. It holds up quite well in the modern era of gaming, and there is really just one thing I wish it had, background animations. It seems to be a bit stiff in this game, but for whatever reason, perhaps technical, it's uh, not something they've added. Nonetheless, it's still an amazing, colorful looking game with excellent character animations all around. I personally remember being like 6 years old booting up this game on my brother Sega and playing it for hours. In fact, looking back, it's one of the earliest games I remember playing at all. This alongside Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter 2, Earthworm Jim, Streets of Rage and FIFA Football are some of my earliest memories of gaming. I do eventually want to make a video on my journey through gaming, 
and how this has all impacted my life in another video. But I'm sure that if you played Tiny Toon Adventures Buster's Hidden Treasure in the 90s, you've got some fun memories to go along with it. For those who haven't played this game before, give it a shot, and you'll realize just how fun this game is. It truly is a classic. Thank you so much for watching my little discussion on Tiny Toon Adventures Buster's Hidden Treasure. If you enjoy this content, hit that like button and subscribe as well and I will see you next time.